Hi there, and welcome to Fuzzy on the Details. My name is Fuzzy, and if you're anything like me, whenever you watch a new Marvel show or movie, or you read a just-released comic, in the back of your mind you're always thinking about what ideas you can adapt for the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game. Maybe it's a new villain that you want to inflict on your players, or a new character you'd like to play yourself. Or maybe you find inspiration for an entirely new campaign to play. Well, after I finished watching Agatha all along the other day, I couldn't stop thinking about what an adventure set on the Witch's Road would be like. So, we're going to talk about it today. Now, I can't do so without sharing some spoilers, but I will not discuss any of the really big reveals. However, if you haven't seen the show yet, I highly recommend it. Definitely a top three Disney Plus show for me. I would not be the least bit upset if you stopped watching this video right now to go binge it. Just leave me a like before you do. With that out of the way, let's get into the details. Agatha All Along starts where WandaVision left off, with Agatha Harkness stripped of her powers and living out a fantasy in her own mind. And that's where she would have stayed if not for the intervention of the teen character who wanted to free Agatha so she would take him on the witch's road. In the second phase of this story, Agatha and the teen gather the coven needed to cast a spell that will grant them access to the witch's road. What follows then is a series of trials, each geared to one of the coven members and each requiring a specific skill to proceed. That was the real focus of the show and it'll be the longest phase of any adventure that you base on it. And once all the trials are complete, there's one final conflict outside of the road and ultimately a reward that comes in the form of power or transformation. Now when I think about this structure, especially about the different challenges and obstacles presented in the form of trials in phase three, I couldn't help but think that there's a way to adapt the Danger Room rules from the X-Men expansion to simulate the Witch's Road. I recently did a video on the Danger Room, so if you haven't seen it yet or if you want a refresher on the rules, just click on the link here or check the description. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting you actually set the Witch's Road in the Danger Room, although you certainly could. But what I'm saying is the rules as presented in the book are flexible enough to simulate a magical challenge like the Witch's Road, or even set one in another arena, just like when Jubilee and Sunspot got dragged to the Mojo video game in X-Men 97, or even the part of the Moon Knight show on Disney Plus that's set in the afterlife. Both of these are quasi-real environments just like the Danger Room is. So let's go through the series at a high level and see how we can turn Agatha all along into an adventure. Now, if you want to set a game on the Witch's Road, adapting episode one isn't strictly necessary. The whole point of this episode is to explain how Agatha got out of the hex that she was in since the finale of WandaVision. So unless your characters were in a similar pickle, you can streamline your adventure and just go directly to episode two. However, the Danger Room rules do suggest a very nice way how you could simulate the process of breaking Agatha or any other character out of a hex or other type of spell. You can consider Agatha to be trapped in Wanda's hex just like a character could be trapped within the Danger Room. And the teen character, as the rules here suggest, could be using some type of telepathic communication to try and break her out. Episode 1 has these moments where Agatha is trying to break through these illusions, and you can imagine a player making logic checks like the rules suggest here to try and see through them. And the teen character was probably granting Agatha an edge when he presented evidence that what Agatha was seeing was not truly reality. Another thing that you can adapt from this episode is the idea of Agatha or any character being depowered. Now, it might not be fun for a player who's already been playing at rank 5 Agatha Harkness to all of a sudden drop them down to rank 1, but it could be fun to actually start a campaign with all of the characters at rank 1 and use the road as a way to regain their former glory. The prize at the end of the road could be the restoration of some or all of their power. And finally, in the show, it's Agatha who is trapped in the hex alone, but... If you're adapting this for an adventure, you could have the entire party trapped in the same way, and they have to work together to break out of the hex rather than rely on an external character like Teen to do so. On to episode two. This is where the characters unlock the hidden gate by singing the Ballad of the Witch's Road, all while under the threat of the Salem Seven. First things first, the narrator should be setting the danger level for the road at this point if they haven't already. According to the Danger Room rules, this is a way to ensure that all of the threats they encounter are aligned all at the same level. 
Therefore, I won't be discussing individual target numbers for the upcoming challenges because you'll be using the danger level to set them. Remember that if you want a tougher experience, you can always ramp up the difficulty. For this trial, I've created the following threat, similar to the random threats presented in the X-Men expansion. Unlock thy hidden gate. All members of the coven must make an ego check to sing the Ballad of the Witch's Road. Characters may use the help teammate reaction to help their coven mates harmonize. Those with the entertainer occupation or others that might have the presence trait may apply their edge to this role. If any characters fail this role, the coven is attacked by a member of the Salem Seven or others who might want to keep them from entering the road. Use a close attack to simulate this. Once all of the party members make a successful ego check, they can then enter the road. Note, this might take more than one round and the enemies could begin to pile up. At this point, we begin the tricks and trials portion of the adventure. You should plan one trial for each party member or coven member, and each trial should be tied to a strength of that character. I'll present my adaptations of the actual trials in the show to give a sense of how you might translate these trials into game mechanics, but narrators should create their own trials that fit the characters in the campaign. For example, if you had a witch from Asgard in the party, you could have a challenge based on runic knowledge instead of tarot. The basic concept is simple though. You'll have the characters make an action check, while a threat of some kind complicates matters. For example, the Episode 3 challenge is a potions-related challenge. Here's my suggestion for the threat that would accompany that room. The basic idea here is the party gets poisoned and must work together to create an antidote. The trial is keyed to Jennifer Kale, the potions witch, so she'll be making a logic action check to create the potion, and to simulate giving instructions to others to gather the ingredients. The other coven members must all make vigilance checks to find the items Jennifer requested. If everyone succeeds at their roles, a door opens up and the party can proceed to the next trial. Treat this series of checks as one round for the purposes of determining how many reactions the characters get. In the show, they've got like half an hour to complete the trial, but that's just way too many opportunities to use help teammate. If any party members fail their vigilance roles, the antidote cannot be brewed, and all party members get the poison condition. And the room begins to flood. You can treat this flooding as an environmental change to the room, again applying the rules from the danger room section of the book. Once poison damage is applied, you can start a new round of checks, giving those who haven't succeeded another opportunity. Once the vigilance checks are all successful and the ingredients have been found, then the potions which can brew the antidote with a logic check. The next trial is tied to the character of Alice Wu Gulliver, and in it, the coven must defeat a generational curse that takes the form of a demon. In this trial, the party must complete a performance of the Ballad of the Witch's Road while being attacked by that demon. Here's the new threat for this trial. All members of the coven must succeed at ego checks to perform the Ballad of the Witch's Road and they must successfully defeat the generational cursed demon. Characters cannot make ego checks if the demon attacked them that round, or if they are set ablaze by the demon. Once all members of the coven have succeeded at ego checks, then the key character can automatically destroy the demon if they make a fantastic success on an ego check on their next turn. Or they can put the demon down the old-fashioned way. You can treat the demon as a close attack threat with some changes I've laid out here to make it a little bit tougher than the average close attack threat from the book. The next trial that the Coven encounters involves communicating with the dead using a Ouija board, and that's followed up by some intra-party fighting with a possessed character. I hesitate to offer a hard and fast set of rules for this trial because anytime you encroach on player agency, you really need to tread carefully. I do want to call your attention to the mental duel rules from the X-Men expansion and how someone who is demoralized in these rules can be telepathically possessed. So, one route you can go in this trial is to run a mental duel with the character that's keyed to this trial, with failure resulting in telepathic possession of the character and forcing that character to fight the rest of the party. With the right group of players, the opportunity to use the mental duel rules within the danger room rules could be really fun. Alternately, you could create a skill challenge similar to the other ones with a simple logic check to use the Ouija board and any failures resulting in a fight with a ghost. 
To represent a ghost with the danger room rules, you could just have it be a close attack threat, with the enemy being immune to health damage, so it must be taken out by focus damage. Either way you play it, you definitely want to be sure you've got a good understanding of how your players feel about PvP combat and player agency as a whole before you tackle this trial. Next up is Lilia's Tarot Car Trial. This episode features three individual threats, Falling Swords, the Salem Seven, plus the threat of the dropping ceiling. For the Falling Swords, I recommend using the ranged attack threat from the Danger Room rules. We haven't had to use agility yet this adventure, so that's a good way to squeeze in some variety. You could run the threat as the rules dictate, or you could essentially have a ranged sword attack happen after each card is placed, with seven cards needed to be placed total. Now for the lowering roof, there's already an environmental effect from the X-Men expansion that you could use, and once the seven cards are placed successfully, you could then introduce the Salem Seven in the form of seven close attack threats, or if that's too many, you could always cap it off at a maximum of one close attack threat per character. Now remember, the Salem Seven are tied directly to Agatha's backstory, so if you wanted to replace these characters with pretty much any other type of enemy that might be pursuing the characters into the Witch's Road, by all means do that. And another thing, you don't have to have this threat happen in this trial. There's already a lot going on, so you could always save this type of confrontation for after the players escape the Witch's Road. I'm going to tread very carefully here with these last two episodes so as not to spoil any of the big reveals in the show. Once all of the characters have succeeded at a trial, they have one last challenge to make before they can get their prize. This challenge can be a simple logic check as the characters figure out for themselves how to make their prize a reality. It's not really a full trial with all of the trappings and environment that the other rooms had. You can certainly and probably should ramp up the difficulty for this logic check though. The prize itself could be unlocking a new power, casting off something that was holding the character back, or some other kind of major transformation or maybe provide them with secret information that could set up the next adventure arc. Regardless of how you might handle the completion of the road and the character's emergence back into the real world, you could also optionally have a boss battle waiting for them outside of the Witch's Road. This could be that opportunity to bring the Salem Seven type villains back into play if they weren't defeated inside the road, or it could be some other major villain that has been pursuing the party, maybe craving the power that they sought on the road. Now, while using the Danger Room rules here are a great opportunity to get some additional value out of the X-Men expansion without needing a connection to mutants, there are some other concepts you can play around with if you'd like. For example, if you don't want the Witch's Road to be a purely mystical, magical place, you could root the road in the Dream Dimension. It would be a good opportunity to use the dream time powers presented in the latest Tony's workshop. Instead of being trapped in a hex, a character could be trapped in a nightmare, and the party needs to use the enter dream power to get in and break them out. You could still have the trials themselves use the danger room rules, but the final encounter to emerge from the dream dimension could be fighting nightmare himself. And of course, there's one extra benefit of going the it was all a dream route. It aligns perfectly with the Wizard of Oz story that is so often referenced in this show. Anyway, those are my ideas about how you can extend the witchy fun of Agatha all along by adapting the show to the MMRPG rules. Let me know your ideas, but be mindful of those major spoilers in the comments, if you please. As always, thanks for your support and have a great day.